Daytime. SEC Daytime. Well, it looks like it's going to be another fine day. Resistance is futile. Just simulate the day. Go ahead. Make my day. How was your day today? Did you have a good day today or a bad day today? Well, what kind of day was it? Well, I don't know. How about you? How was your day? We have a big show for Good you. luck, show boy. How will we do when we go? Oh, that's the smartest thing I've heard all day. SEC Daytime. Daytime. Been a lot of talk, actually more in the way of snark, in the past year or so about Donald Trump's eyes. And no matter our philosophical, spiritual, sexual, or political positions on the philosophical, spiritual, sexual, or political issues of these times, there is one plain and simple truth that cannot be refuted, debated, or denied by anyone. The dude has white circles around his eyes. Very seldom so blatantly obvious as to be worthy of a new Kim Carnes chart topper, but always in one shade or another, to one degree or another, plain to see. The conventional wisdom, when offered, tends to laser in on Trump's apparent lack of skill when it comes to self-tanning. The overwhelming temptation, of course, at this point, is to find some way to work throwing a little shade on the Donald into the conversation here, but we run a classier shop than that around here. Not to mention that it goes without saying, America is about not judging people by the color of their skin. I don't like the way he said that. Or colors, as the case may be. I have the most unusual coloring book, the kind you never see. I'm no credentialed makeup artist nor dermatologist, and I'm not one of those who ultraviolently tan their hide, Clyde, so I've got nothing to offer in rebuttal to the tacky tanning theory. After watching and listening to Trump and campaign action, though, lo, these past months, there is another cause of that distinctive discoloration that occurs to me. And I was reminded of that cause when watching the coverage of the protests and arrests in San Diego Friday outside the scheduled Trump rally. San Diego, CNN. Police clad in riot gear and wielding batons began dispersing a crowd of Trump supporters and protesters here Friday after the presumptive GOP nominee held a rally. After issuing orders to the crowd of roughly 1,000 to disperse, police began forcefully and aggressively pushing protesters, checking them with their batons. At least 35 people were arrested police said. Even as there was no room to move, police officers continued to push protesters and reporters with some toppling over in the fray. Police pepper sprayed several protesters. Soon, some protesters sitting in a public square refused to move as police officers in riot gear moved in, leading to several arrests. The clashes began after Trump supporters flooded into the streets following the event at the San Diego Convention Center. A few altercations broke out between supporters of the presumptive Republican nominee and protesters opposed to his campaign, particularly Trump's views on immigration. Scores of police officers, clad in riot gear and clutching batons, separated the two groups. As protesters and supporters lingered in the streets, some individuals on both sides began throwing eggs, bottles, and other objects at each other. As the situation intensified at moments with several volleys of bottles being tossed between the sides, police officers moved in forcefully and at times aggressively pushing back Trump supporters, protesters, and media caught in the scrum with their batons. But while some violent altercations did break out, the two sides mostly shouted and chanted at each other. Protesters, some of whom waved Mexican flags, shouted F Trump and immigration-focused slogans. Trump supporters countered with chants of USA and build that wall, prompting responses of fuck your wall. One man wearing a free hugs shirt repeatedly stepped between the two sides, seeking to prevent physical altercations. First, Kudos and a here, here, good show, chap, to that good-hearted lad in the uh, free hugs t-shirt. Well intended, and certainly well played, even though, given the tone of the Trump show to date, wearing a free hugs tee to a Donald rally is a little like wearing a Stephen Hawking tee to a Hank Jr. concert. Meanwhile, back to the protest. Watching various and sundry news panel shows over the last few days and weeks, it occurs that one bubble keeps rising to the top of the fizz and fuss, but nobody yet has proffered the popper pin to pop it. 
A non-Trump supporter advocate spokesperson makes an observation about something rude, crude, hateful, spiteful, cheap, low blow, et al, e pluribus unum things that their great orange hope has said or done, and the applicable Trump supporter advocate spokesperson immediately offers rebuttal, refutation, and or rationalization, usually including some kind of pivot in the direction of Hillary, Bernie, or Barack. Something along the lines of, well, those who are supporting Mr. Trump are simply expressing their long-simmering resentment of the same old politics of promises and lies. Promises and lies as practiced by, most notably, Secretary Clinton, Senator Sanders, President Obama. The level of Trump love obsession can usually be measured by whether or not the speaker uses the term President Obama, Barack Obama, or often with just a soup song of sneer, Obama. Pert near eight years, second of two terms, pretty much drawn to a close, and the bile is still so high up in their throats that they can't bring themselves to refer to the guy as president. Nope. No Ahab-like obsession, or do the scratch test and find definitive signs of racism there. Now let's move along. Nothing to see. Meanwhile, as to the protesters who are daring to show the insolence of expressing their resentment at the rude, crude, hateful, spiteful, cheap, low, blow, ad nauseum, e pluribus unum things that their great orange hope has said or done, agitators, losers, fools and libtards who are just too damn stupid to see Hillary for the lying, murdering, evil bitch she is or Bernie for the hippy-dippy socialist loony tune he is. They're the reason the streets are filled with anger. They're the reason that there are protests in the street. They're the reason that Mr. Trump's reasonable, mature, thoughtful, insightful followers can't just gather together in peace and harmony to show their support and hear more of the masterfully thought out specific details of all the plans their candidate has made to make America great again. Those damn losers did it again in San Diego. And Donald very tweetly let the SDPD know that he was grateful for their assist. Yeah, yeah, very peaceful, model citizens, darn those thugs, yada yada. Let's get back to that bubble that I mentioned a few minutes ago. But first, in order to prevent as much pivoting as possible from the defenders of the Donald, let's try this. For the sake of this discussion, let's pretend that we all, all of us, each and every ding-dang one of us, agree on the following. All of the candidates have given us valid reasons to oppose, dislike, disagree with, reject, and or resent them. So let's don't talk content. None. Zip. Zero. Nada. Let's talk style. Nothing more. Zip. Zero. Nada. Lover. Hater. Wish her well. Wish her an ending like Jimmy Hoffa. Hillary's presentation style is basically garden variety, business as usual campaigning. Love him. Hate him. Wish him well. Wish him into the cornfield. Bernie's presentation style is basically garden variety, business as usual campaigning. Love him, hate him, wish him well, wish him back into the reality show that's 99% show and 1% reality, Donald's style is anything but basic garden variety, business as usual campaigning. Assuming what a majority of us would define based on fairness, common sense, and a historical tradition of uplift and enlightening is inspirational, none of the three tentatives presumptives are inspiring us. But of the three, only one candidate has opted to replace inspiring with inciting. Three guesses. And first two don't count. Time's up. Even those political pundits who loudly and proudly shout out their opposition to the guy and articulately warn of the dangers of actually electing him president admit that Donald Trump is, if nothing else, possessed of an uncommon talent at working people into such a frenzy that they would do whatever he asked of them. I triple dog dare you! Q Don Quixote here. To be willing to march into hell for a heavenly cause. The thing is, my fellow Americans, is that this ain't no impossible dream. This is the real deal, Katie bar the door, kick the tires and light the fire, shit pot stirring. A style successfully employed throughout history by a host of successful shit pot stirrers. Leaders of lynch mobs. telling the truth. You bet he is. You bet I'm right. This man's right. Boys, I've been punching cows ever since I was knee-high to a grasshopper. And where I come from, 
They ain't no rustlers. And for why? We use the rope. Well, if the rest of you are scared, I'll handle the rope myself. Rope's a lot cheaper than paying juries, and a lot surer. Spud's right. He's got it all figured out. We've done enough of this rustling. Give him the rope cure. Well, how about it, men? How oh, men? Yes. Just when is this party coming off? It won't be long. World leaders from the school of conquest and nuclear warheads in their backpacks. Self-proclaimed saviors with a pair of cool shades and a vat full of cool aid. By the way, at this point, this whole history of people stirring emotions and getting a lot of other people lathered up enough to follow blindly starts to shed a little light on all those controversial comparisons of Trump to Hitler that got the faithful all hot and bothered a while back. People say that Trump is actually just like Hitler. But I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that people are saying that. And there it is. The bubble, the thing, the tell, the part of the magic trick that you don't see as it's going down, but is absolutely critical to pulling off the illusion. Let's call it the wink. The technique that Trump is using to so masterfully mesmerize those who are, well, mesmerized. Stirring up a global cauldron of passion and anger and frustration and venom and vitriol and viciousness and bigotry and hatred while seeming to never lay a hand on or anywhere near the big spoon that's stirring it. And the really remarkable thing here is, once you get a peek at the how-to video, absolutely nothing more than a noisier, more grandiose update of a stunt we used to pull on each other when we were 10 years old. Grab the other kid's arm, use it to smack him in the face and keep chanting, why are you hitting yourself? Why are you hitting yourself? Trump's mastery of the technique also includes the illusion of validation from others. I'm not saying that Megyn Kelly is a bimbo who was on the rag during the first debate, but people tell me that she is, and was. I'm not saying that Carly Fiorina is ugly and nobody would vote for somebody with that face, but people tell me that she is, and they wouldn't. I don't have a clue as to what this economic policy I'm going to offer means, but there are people who know a lot about economics who tell me it's a good plan. A terrific plan. You, with your words like knives and swords and weapons that you use against me. There's that zany little business about inciting people to hatred and or violence. Here's just one tiny tidbit of the eloquence and inspirational presentation of the Republican Party nominee for the office of President of the United States. I'd like to punch him in the face. All you are is me. The protests and accompanying anger and violence in San Diego and bet the black belt kids yet to come between now and at the very least November are nothing more than the inevitable result of an irrefutable scientific fact. Put a flame next to a flammable source and blazing fire will occur. Someday I'll be living in a big old city and all your Never gonna be as mean. Yes. Through circumstance, fate, divine providence, or just pure dumb damn luck, Donald Trump has been handed a global megaphone. He alone decides how to use it. He alone has chosen thus far to use it to incite, not inspire. He's chosen to play to and capitalize on people's fear, anger, frustration, and in doing so, further energizes and inflames fear, anger, and frustration. For those still a little fuzzy on the distinction between inspire and incite, inspire. The only thing we have to fear is fear itself. Insight. Like to punch him in the face. As to that distinctive discoloration in Donald's own face, well, some of it is obviously poor tanning technique. But something tells me that some, if not a lot of it, is the result of Donald's eyes opening and shutting a lot more than the average in the course of a little gesture that some of us use when we want others to know we're just screwing with them. Or that we've put something over on someone. Keep in mind, I'm not saying that Donald Trump is winking at his legions as he disrespects and denigrates pretty much everything that indicates class act behavior. But people are telling me that's exactly what he's doing. 